In this video, we're going to be looking at logical operators. Logical operators are operators that are used to change the outcome of a Boolean expression in some way. It, could, it can change a true to a false or a false to a true, or we can use it to combine multiple Boolean expressions together. So let's take a look at a few of them. The first one uh, we discussed in a couple videos ago, I uh, did, didn't go into too much detail, uh, but we talked about the exclamation point, which is the not operator. And that is logical negation. When we want to negate the outcome of a Boolean expression, we can throw the not operator in front of it. Uh, and that changes a true to false or a false to true. There's also the and operator, which is two amper signs put together. Okay, And the and operator is a logical conjunction. Uh, a conjunction is something that gets joined together. Both things have to be true. This has to be true and that has to be true in order for the entire Boolean expression to be true. And then we have the OR operator, which is the double pipes. Okay, and the pipe key is above your enter key on your keyboard. Uh, if you hold shift above the backslash, there is the pipe key. So two vertical pipes are the OR operator. Okay, so the or operator is a logical disjunction, and we use that when we want to combine two statements and get a, a true value out if statement one is true or if statement two is true or if they're both true. And along with that, we also have the exclusive or, which is the caret symbol located above the six key on your keyboard. That's an exclusive or. It's like a logical disjunction, but it only works if one of the elements is true. This is true or that is true, but they're both not true. Uh, we don't see that one quite as often, uh, especially in uh, more rudimentary programming, but it is very useful when you get into certain aspects of logic. So let's look at a truth table for the not operator. So we have a condition called P and we have a condition called not P. So if the condition of P has a value of true, condition of not P will have a value of false. So let's take a look at this example up here. We're going to assume that the age of the person is 24 and their weight is 140 pounds. So if I say, age is greater than 18, 24 is greater than 18, but because there's a not operator, since this is true, the not operator changes its value to false. Let's look at another one. Uh, if something is false, the not operator will change it to true. So weight equals 150. So our weight was set to 140. 140 is not equal to 150, so this would be false, but the not operator changes the entire thing to true. So that's how the not operator work. It changes an expression that's true to false and an expression that is false to true. Now let's look at the AND operator. Uh, one of the ways I like to remember that an AND operator works is that the result is only true if each different thing we're testing is true. So if operand P1 is true and operand P2 is true, then P1 and P2 will be true. Any other combination is false. If they're both false, the result is false. Okay, if one is false and one is true, the result is false. If the first thing is true and the second thing is false, the result is false. The only way to get true when combining two things with and is that if both sides of the conjunction, both sides of the and sign are true. So let's look up here. Age is less than 18 uh, and age is set to 24. So this is false. So immediately we know because they're both not true uh, that the entire statement is false. Okay, both conditions, the left condition and the right condition would have to be true. As a matter of fact, Java doesn't even test the right condition under an and if the first one's false. Because if, if age is less than or equal to 18 is false, it doesn't matter whether the second one is true or false because they both have to be true. Okay. Let's look at another example down here. 
age is greater than 18, that would be true because age is set to 24. And weight is greater than 140, that would be false. So a true and a false um, would give us a false result because they're both sides of the and sign are not true. Okay, And then down here is one age greater than 18, 24 is greater than 18. Weight equals 140, and we're down here, we're comparing it, is the weight greater than or equal to 140? So the left side is true, the right side condition is true, and since this is true and that is true, uh, the overall statement, the, the entire Boolean expression evaluates as true. Now let's look at the OR operator. The OR operator returns true if either uh, the left function or the right function are true. Either one can be true to get a true out. So two falses gives us false. Okay, but a false and a true since uh, since P1 is false or P2 is true, since one of them is true, we get a true out. So age is greater than 34, that's false, but weight is less than equal to 140, that's true. So one of the two is true this one or that one, since this one or that one is true, the entire statement is true. Here's another one, age greater than 14. So the left side of this statement, that is true, but the right side, weight greater than or equal to 150, that's false. This is true or that is true. One of them is true, so the entire statement is true. Okay, And it would also be true if both things were true. So let's go back on an AND operator. The only way to get a true is if both sides are true. And on an OR operator, the only way to get a false is if both sides are false. That's another way to think of them. Okay. OR operator always returns true unless both sides are false. AND operator always returns true if both sides are true. Okay. It takes a little practice to wrap your head around these sometimes. All right, now let's look at the ex exclusive or. Um, again, we don't see this one quite as often. Uh, age is greater than 24. That is false. Weight is greater than 140. That is false. So since both sides are false, we get a false out. That's no different uh, than the or operator. Okay. If one side is false and the other side is true, we get a true. So age is greater than 34, that's false, but this side, weight greater than or equal to 140, that is true. Since one side is true, we get true. Okay, and then this one, the left side is true and the right side is false. Okay, since one side is true, we get true, but if both conditions were true, we would get false. Only one of the conditions in an exclusive or, only one of them can be true in order to get true out. All right, so let's look at some examples. Uh, here's a program that checks whether a number is divisible by two and three, whether a number is divisible by two or three, and whether a number is divisible by two or three, but not both. So examples, let me pull it over here. Okay, we're asking the user, we have a scanner. We ask the user to enter an integer. And then here's a statement. We have an if statement. Okay, and inside the parentheses is a condition, actually two conditions, joined by the AND operator. And remember, the only way this will be true if, is if the left side is true and the right side is true. Let me close these down. Okay. The second part has an OR operator joining the same two things. If the left side is divisible by two or the right side is divisible by three it's going to tell us that the number was divisible by two or three and then down here if it's divisible by two or if it's divisible by three but not both um, and this is joined by the exclusive or operator so let's run this one quick okay enter an integer i'll start with six Okay, six is divisible by two and three. Okay, six is divisible by two or three. That's true as well. 
okay? But it's not divisible by two exclusive or with three. So we do not see that one. It doesn't say, but not both. Let's go to, let's do, run it again. This time we'll do nine. Nine is divisible by two or three because the second thing is true. It's divisible by three. Nine is divisible by two or three, but not both because we know it's divisible by three, but not divisible by two. Uh, and let's check it with eight. Eight is divisible by two or three. That is true for an or because it is divisible by two, even though it's not divisible by three. Okay, and eight is divisible by two or three, but not both because it is not divisible by both of those. Okay, so the not operator comes in and the and only worked when we had, when we used six, because it was divisible by both. Let's look at one more sample application. Um, let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger. All right, we're using a scanner again. We're asking the user to enter a year um, as an integer, okay? And then we have a Boolean called is leap year. So we're doing a result on this right side, comparing some things, and we're going to assign the result to the left side. Now, what is the logic for whether a year is a leap year or not? Okay, a leap year is a year if it's divisible by four, but it can't be divisible by 100 or it is divisible by 400. So there's some exceptions to a leap year. We often think this, hey, if it's divisible by four, it's a leap year, um, but not if it ends with a zero, zero. So if it's divisible by 100, but it is if it's divisible by 400. So let's look at the logic of this. This one gets a little more complicated. So we have this expression here and notice there's a parentheses and if I highlight it, it gives me the match. So this left side, is ORed with the right side, okay? So if the year is divisible by 400, that's on the right side of an OR, uh, is leap year will be true. If it's not divisible by 400, we have to check this left side. Is it divisible by four? Yeah, it might be, but is it also not divisible by 100 and there's where we have a not equal right there we're, ch we're checking to see um, if the result after we divided by 100 if the remainder is zero or not equal to zero so it's not divisible by 100 so let's do some uh, examples here either way if this side is true or this side is true the entire thing is true but this side is only true if both these conditions are true. It has to be divisible by four and not be divisible by 100. So let's run it. Let's enter the year um, 2100. Okay. It's not a leap year because it has a double zero on it. And this part would be false and it's not divisible by 400 but 2000 is a leap year why because it's divisible by 400 okay it's also divisible by 4 so there you go this is a little bit more complicated statement it might take a minute to wrap your head around but the thing you got to remember is PEMDAS still applies. So parentheses happen. We, we evaluate this side and compare it to that side. But this side has two operators. Um, so we have to uh, evaluate the AND on the left side and then take the results of that and OR it with the result of the right side. So that's Boolean operators. Uh, again, when they get more complicated, it takes a little bit of practice. Uh, I always tell my students, build them up slowly, test each side separately, work your way through it.